So let's actually take care of the buttons now. We want them to be um, beneath, beneath the text here. So let's jump back into the code. Let's for clarity's, for the sake of clarity, let's give ourselves some title here for this section. And uh, this is not the text section, but the button section. Okay. Um, and now, as I said, now we actually need this um, this container. Now we could probably do something and reuse the old one and just uh, and just add it, but that would also not be the best idea here. I think the easiest thing would be to just create a new one for the button. Now this is a new instance of the same uh, of the same thing. It's just a visual element, but we will add the same um, the same. USS class, obviously this element. Yeah, now we have to add it to the window. So these are not the buttons, this is just a container for the buttons. And now before we add the actual buttons, we will obviously also need some styling for them. I just clicked something. Um, I just created something beforehand in UI Builder that looked somewhat um, okay. Uh, again, this is not a perfect design, but um, the, we are not talking about some beautiful design right now. We are talking about functionality and about custom components. So I just prepared uh, those three classes. This is the class that will be that gen that will be uh, for general buttons um and there is uh, just some uh, padding some border um stuff like that uh, don't worry too much about this obviously you can change this uh, however you want to have it it looks much more complicated than it actually is but once you start setting those things in ui build and for example you set the border for um for all the left, right, top and bottom thing in, in one click, you, you automatically get those four entries. So this is looks much more complicated than it than it actually is. Um, and then we have those two uh, special classes that will um, help us distinguish the buttons. So the buttons will both have this class and uh, the cancel button will have this class in addition and the confirm button will have this class additionally and that will make so that uh, their background color is different and you can actually um, at one glance distinguish them so again we will also need the re references for those classes let's call them pop-up button like that then uh, uh, cancel nope and one for confirm Okay, we have the references. Now we can actually add our buttons. Let's start with the confirm button. New button. And now in a button you can actually provide the text that should be on the button just like that directly here and we will call that confirm so this is just um this is just a button that will uh, the text that will appear on the button and for something like that where we when we basically know that we always want to have a confirm and a cancel option this would actually even be okay to do that um, inside the component 
And now we need to add those two classes, which were pop up button. and confirm. Okay, that should work. Now let's take our button container and add the button to the container. Now let's very quickly repeat the process for the other button since we are at it and then see the at least the final visual results. Now this will be the cancel button. We will put some appropriate text in here and now we are adding the class to the other buttons, to the other button, pop button and the cancel class in this case and we are finally adding the button. So voila, that should add our two buttons and we should be able to see them already. Let's go back. Yes, we can see them, but this does not look familiar. This does not look like what I was setting up in my um, beautiful design approach here. So again, I made the same mistake and I forgot to save the style sheet. And we get um, this uh, UI toolkit bug that sometimes appears, which destroyed our one change. But you can see um, when you're working with those, um, with those controls from a script, and this doesn't actually destroy a lot because you are loading all those things from your script. So um, you are not relying on UI Builder to correctly save. The bug that you just saw is something that sometimes happens in UI Builder. Um, uh, and it would destroy kind of all the changes that you did in UI Builder itself. One of those were, was the color of this, um, this text that we changed before and now now it's good. So again, save the UI builder just all the time. Um, this looks quite okay. The only thing that I'm surprised is that the buttons are not actually um, separated. I thought that we should have we should have this space around property on the horizontal container. So let's just check what happened here. We have the container, we added the class. That should work. So let's go back and check this in Unity. There's one thing that could actually have gone wrong because when we have the space around uh, property on the children, and we then look at the window, yes, and we centered um, the parent. And when we centered the parent, that means that the stretch, the default stretch behavior is not on. Um, and that means that the space around thing doesn't actually have an, any effect because you can see that um, this container, it just takes up as much space as it needs for the buttons. So there is no space to distribute. When we go to the, to the uh, parent element and set it back to stretch, um, which is the default generally, then our buttons are nicely aligned. Um, Yes, okay, so that looks good. Let's just save that. And from a visual um, from a visual point of view, I think we are, um, that looks quite okay. Now, again, that's not um, Apple level design, but I think for our purpose here, it's okay. Um, so we created this uh, custom pop-up window. It looks okay. The only thing that's left to do is to give it uh, some functionality actually. So let's do this now.